tips, selectors uh, that you use more than once. So if you, if you get a collection, like if you're, instead of saying, if, instead of putting this uh, in a function call every single time, like dollar prends this, um, and, and you're doing that like five times within a function, do it once and then use the variable. Do it once, declare a variable, so, you know, and then, and then use that instead, right? I mean, if, if the value isn't going to change for some reason, if you know it's not going to change, then store it in a variable and use that, okay? It'll be a lot easier than doing another function call. With this, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're, if you're doing like, uh, you know, div dot, you know, if you're doing some kind of crazy selector, it's like you're, you're querying the DOM. You're having it go through the DOM every single time. Um, it's, it's not good. So, yeah, you can also use the length property to check if something exists. If, okay, so do I have any, do I have any list items? Um, I can find out, here I'm, I'm declaring a variable, list items equals dollar li, and I'm, setting another variable, num items, to list items dot length, okay? So that's gonna, that num items is gonna tell me how many list items I have, right? And if it's zero, it's falsy, right? So I could say if num items, and so that would be if the value is one or more, then I'll do something, right? Um, Often there's no need to check for the existence of it. Uh, sometimes you, you, you could just say, you know, list items dot add class pretty. If there are no list items, it's going to be a, a collection of zero elements, and it's not going to do anything, right? It's going to try to do something to zero elements, and it'll be done. Yeah. Does that make sense to everybody? It's different from like using like get element by ID. Like if you tried to do document .get element by ID and then you tried to get the find out the class name of that element, if that element didn't exist, it would throw a, uh, an error. It would say you're trying to get a property of null or undefined. All right. Um, and, and you can't do that. Undefined doesn't have properties. So you're, you're, you're breaking things. But here, you're always going to get something back. That's, um, that's why you have to check for the length. Okay? You'll always get something back, even if it's an empty object or an object with a, um, an empty array with a length of zero. Right. OK. I just remembered, I did something earlier, and I wanted you to, ah, yeah, right here. OK, I, I, wanted, I wanted to explain myself here. You see var list items there with a dollar in front of it? OK, you all know that there's nothing special about the dollar on, on that variable name, right? The only reason I did that there is for me. <laughs> it's because I, I like to know that, I'm working, that what I'm working with is a jQuery collection and, and that I can um, attach jQuery methods to, to it, right? So I can do an add class or whatever on it, right? I, and and that, that reminds me, oh yeah, I'm working with a jQuery collection here. You know, so I'll just, I'll, I'll just do dollar list items. But it's not special in any way. You know, I could get rid of the dollar and it would mean the same thing. Is that, we're all clear on that? Good. All right. Okay. Yeah. Concatenate and, ah, yeah. Avoid jQuery's custom selectors when possible. Sometimes you're going to want to use one, and it's not the end of the world. But 
there are other times when you really ought not to. Okay, Th they're not really serving you well at all. Um, they're, they're, they're not. They, they don't do anything that you can't do with a, a real CSS selector better. Okay. <coughs> Colon checkbox. That is a custom jQuery selector that only exists in jQuery land. It's not a real CSS selector. And so jQuery, I mean, so jQuery can't use its own, it can't use the native query selector all uh, method. And so it's going to, like, in the browsers that support it. So the browsers, the modern browsers, are going to do that much more slowly than they're going to do the third one. Okay? Because the third one, jQuery can just take this chunk and stick it into a query selector all and say, bam, we're done, right? The first one, it, it can't. It has to kind of parse it and apply all these regular expressions to it. And then, oh, and here's something else. Why is the second one better than the, than the first one? It's a smaller list. Sorry? It's running against a smaller list. It first goes against input. Yeah, that's right. So, so with, um, with the first one, that is equivalent to doing that. So it's saying, loop through every single element in the whole document and see if it's a checkbox. And see if it's type equals checkbox, right? That's ridiculous. You know that only inputs can have a type e equals checkbox, right? Only inputs can be checkboxes. So, so do this if you're going to use the, the custom selector. But better to just do this last one here. Make sense? Awesome. OK. Uh, here's another one. Div colon first. It was great at first. I loved all these funky selectors. I, it was so fun. Like, I could do anything with them, you know? It was really neat. But it's, it's slower. It's slower. It has to parse that out and figure out what's going on and do all sorts of crazy crap. With the, the second one, it just goes, get elements by tag name, bam. And then it says, ah, pluck, pluck out the first one. We're done. OK? So because, because it does the, the real work in that jQuery function, right, with, with that first selector, that's where the real work is being done. And then the method is just acting on the collection that it already has. So it's, it's much easier. OK. Another example, li colon eq3, use the, the method instead. OK. Less than 3, use 0, 3, like so. So if that's 0 and up to 3, up to the up to the fourth one, but not including. 